What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve problem 2.11 of Griffith's 4th edition. The problem reads, Use Gauss law to find the electric field inside and outside the spherical shell of radius R that carries a uniform char surface charge density sigma. Compare your answer with problem 2.7. Okay, now uh, here we have a spherical shell. So if this is your spherical shell of radius R, we're looking for the electric field inside and outside. So for inside, the, uh, the points from the center of the sphere would be R less than capital R. And then for outside, we're going to consider R greater than r okay so let's start with r less than capital r so in this case the gaussian surface that we're going to use is a spherical one so that we'll be able to use gauss law uh, easily because of the uh, spherical symmetry okay so if this is the this is now the gaussian surface And this is R, so this is your Gaussian surface for R less than capital R. Okay, so first is we find the enclosed charge. The enclosed charge, the charge enclosed by the, this Gaussian surface is zero because there is no volume enclosed. Remember, this is a shell. So that means there's nothing inside the shell. So therefore, this in Gauss law, the electric field will be equal to zero. Easy, right? Now, what about for points outside the spherical shell? Okay, so again, we're going to compute first the enclosed charge. So in this case, the Gaussian surface will be will will be a sphere, but the spherical shell or the spherical Gaussian surface will be bigger than our spherical shell. So this will be the Gaussian surface. Okay. Now because of the fact that the, the surface charge density sigma is uniform. So if we take the area integral of this, of the enclosed charge, sigma is uniform. So this is sigma times the integral of dA. So we just take the total integral of the area. So that's basically the total area which is 4 pi capital R squared. So therefore, the Q enclosed will now be sigma times 4 pi R squared. Okay, so therefore, Gauss law, which is written as E dot dA, will now be equal to sigma times 4 pi R squared divided by Epsilon naught. Okay, because of the fact that the we have spherical symmetry, therefore this close integral will now will now be reduced to a simple multiplication of E times the total area of the Gaussian surface, which is four pi r squared. And this is equal to four pi capital R squared sigma over epsilon 4 pi will cancel so therefore the electric field will now be equal to sigma r squared over epsilon not r squared okay this is your vector uh, electric field vector okay the the, uh, the electric field vector will be pointing radially outward again due to your 
uh, because of your spherical symmetry. Okay? Now, if you're going to recall the result in problem 2.7, the electric field uh, inside, uh, inside will be 0. This is what we calculated. And then the electric field from problem 2.7, the electric field is given by 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q uh, r squared. Okay? R hat. So how is this? Equal to this. Now it this is is this equation will be equal to this equation because of the fact that sigma, which is the surface charge density of your spherical shell, is equal to the total charge of the spherical shell divided by the area, which is 4 pi r squared. So if you're going to multiply it here, this becomes E times Q over 4 pi r squared times r squared over epsilon naught r squared r hat so capital r squared will cancel and then you'll end up with 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over r squared r hat which is the same as your result in problem 2.7 but you notice that when you solve for the electric field in problem 2.7, it's very, very, uh, the, the integral that is involved using uh, that, that, that resulted from using Coulomb's law is very, very difficult. Okay? But using Gauss law, things are much easier. Okay? So that's it. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the simple the solution to problem 2.11. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.